Hello everybody, Strive Hacker in the developphp.com forums requested to see how I design something in Fireworks. So this is a Fireworks video tutorial made special for him. I hope that that is okay with you. So what he wants to see is how I created the background in my new PHP syntax validator and I'll show you what he's talking about. If you go to the developphp.com forward slash syntax validator you'll see this online PHP syntax validator I'm working on. And he's talking about that background with the hatch design. And really it's just a small sliver of a rectangle that I'm repeating across the page. And repeating a design across the page like that is a really smart way to program a website because all the browser all the user's browser has to download is that one small sliver and it can repeat that file all throughout the page, making it a very fast loading process. Let's create a new document and I'm just going to make mine four hundred by five hundred just to start out with and I'm going to draw out a rectangle and I can make it whatever size I want I want to make it a little higher than that actually just so it comes down my page pretty good length alright so there's a rectangle and actually you can fit canvas on that and what I did was I put a gradient on it so I went to gradient down here in its fill selector you go to gradient linear I don't want it so dark on top so I'm going to make that linear top color a little bit lighter so I can just go down here and pick any shade I want between this light and dark so I'm gonna go right about there maybe and then we'll go down to the texture here and the one I used for that was the I think it was the crosshatch this one here here we'll use crosshatch 3 I think that's the one I used so there's your crosshatches and you can see when you put the crosshatches or any kind of texture on your shape if you have a gradient on it many times it will fade to black or fade to white where you can't see that cross hatch when you get down to the when it fades into whatever color you're fading into in this case I'm just gonna fade to white we can even fade to something not so white maybe right about there now what you do is you take your cross hatch bring it down a little make sure it fades in real good so just on top you can see the hatch is pretty good that should work right there and I simply completed the design with two rectangles on top I put one it was about like that and that had a solid fill of that color I think and that had no hatch and then the next rectangle was right about here somewhere it was about that thick and that one I made white and I gave it a couple of shadow filters I went to drop shadow, make sure this one's all the way down to 70, and I made it maybe 3 or something like that. I think those are my settings. And then I did the same thing. I added drop shadow, but going the other way, going up. So I changed the angle going this way to 90 degrees. I pulled this one down a little, and that's about what I had. Then once I put that there, I then adjusted the opacity on it. I brought it down to about right there something like that. Now the last thing you have to do is just change the canvas size. So just click on the side somewhere out here to where you see this fit canvas button and all that stuff and you change the canvas size. I'm gonna make mine 24 and then I'm gonna look real close and see how my hatches line up so I don't get some wacky design. I want it all to be smooth when it lays across the page and repeats. Press OK. So let's go ahead and zoom in there and see what we have going on. Now it looks like those hatches are going to meet up just right. Let me try that out. So I'm going to go to File, Export Wizard, Continue, The Web, Exit, and it's important to save this as an optimized web type file. JPEG is preferable. I went up to about 86 with mine on the quality of my JPEG. It made a 2.29 kilobyte strip, and you can see that strip right there. Export you put it wherever you want to put it. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. Save. Let's minimize fireworks. And here we are on our desktop. And I'm going to open Dreamweaver. So to get that strip laid across the page, I'm just going to create a new HTML file. I'm going to save it to my desktop. It's on my desktop where the background file was. Now I can go to the page properties here in Dreamweaver. And I'm going to show you the code that this produces. But if you're using Dreamweaver, you might as well just use these nice tools that Dreamweaver gives you for adjusting the CSS and a couple of other things about your page. So let's go to background image, go to the folder where you have those things, 
and pick that image that you just made. Now you see repeat? You want to repeat X. That way it repeats horizontally. It won't repeat vertically. Apply. OK. And there's your background, my friend. All you have to do is make sure you have those files both on the web. If you want to use that background for your page, you have to make sure that that background file is up on your website so the page can call it. Now let's look at the code. You can see the CSS is very, very simple. It's just affecting the body tag with a background image and background repeat. And you can see the image is right there. So that would be the path to the image on your server when, when it's online or whatever. And repeat is set to repeat X. And that's how simple it is, my friend. And there you have it. That's the same exact background I had. And you can look really close at my hatches, and you'll see that they line up perfectly. There are no spots where the, the hatches kind of overlap each other or have a bad design in them. They match up perfectly as they repeat across the page. Oh yeah, I almost forgot a real important part. In your fireworks design here, you're going to have a gradient. So you got to go get that color that's on the bottom part of the gradient. Mine's not exactly white. So I go back into Dreamweaver and in the page properties, the background color, make sure that I assign that color code. I think it was F-O, F-0, 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 I think. I'm not sure if you need a pound sign there. Let me see. Oh, nope, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Now the design, the background of the page, no matter how tall it gets, will blend right into that graphic that you put in there. Alrighty, dude, that's how it's done. I'll see you next time.